Hello, my friends. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits, and GD match, and even G25 results of Kriotonas 4, which is a Narva culture individual from uh, the Narva culture in Latvia. It is a female. Her mitochondrial lineage was U5. Let's look at the time period where she lived. Uh, it looks like she lived in the early middle Neolith Neolithic period in 55 to 29 centuries before the Common Era. Uh, 29 centuries is definitely more of the late Neolithic, even uh, moving on to the Chalcolithic period, but 55 centuries is definitely um, the middle Neolithic. But it's kind of it's kind of very difficult to um, to pinpoint exactly the date that this individual lived. So let's see uh grave four. Oh, it's actually from lithuania interesting so i said it's latvia but it's actually Lith lithuania let's show you the map where this individual is from so this is the location where she was buried right here in lithuania let's see what she scores with g25 obviously i made a relevant model for her uh she's a hunter gatherer from this region so i modeled her as a mixture of western hunter gatherer ancient north eurasian and uh, Anatolian hunter-gatherer, and this is what she scores. She, she's mostly a Western hunter-gatherer, 79% Western hunter-gatherer, but she does have a little bit of ancient North Eurasian, 16% ancient North Eurasian ancestry, and she also does have a little bit of Anatolian hunter-gatherer ancestry. There's a little bit of Southern or like Mediterranean-like ancestry in her as well, 4% of that as well. Obviously much, much less than in modern Lithuanians or Latvians, but it's still present in her as well. Let me show you what she scores with... Um, Eurogenes K36, this is what she scores with Eurogenes K36. Let's let's um, see these results real quick. So she's scoring 34.6% uh, Finno-Scandian, like Finnish, 25% uh, East Central European, which is like Latvian or Lithuanian, 14.5% Eastern European, 10% North Atlantic, which is kind of like Irish or like French, these kinds of uh, admixtures, 7% North Sea, which is more like Scandinavian, 4% Basque, and I noticed that these European hunter-gatherers, a lot of them score Basque. 1.5% Volga Ural. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, you don't normally see European hunter-gatherers, unless they are Eastern hunter-gatherers, scoring Volga Ural. Followed by that is 0.79% French, and followed by that is 0.63% Central European. And now let's see what, what she scores with my ethnic calculator. Let's see the ethnic calculator results here. Here she is closest to French, uh, two individuals from France, followed by Sungir 6 from Kiev and Rus, Kievska Rus, followed by North Germanic, followed by North Italian, followed by Finnish, followed by British, uh, seven individuals, followed by French. So that's, that's quite interesting. And the closest mixtures for her is a mixture of two individuals from France plus seven individuals from Britain. All right, that's quite interesting. And that was done on the basis of 522 SNPs. All right. Um, let's see what she looked like. Let's see the national code calculator results. That's definitely quite interesting to see the phenotype. So she's actually quite light. That's definitely very interesting. So for the eye color, uh, she definitely doesn't have darkest brown eyes. You can see that's zero, absolutely zero percent likelihood of darkest brown eyes. Uh, definitely doesn't have brown eyes. Probably doesn't have hazel eyes either. So most likely her eye color is green, blue with amber center or blue, but most likely it is green. That's the largest category that she scores here. For hair color, it looks like she most likely has dark blonde hair. That's just just kind of uh, unusual. I mean, I don't I don't see that many people scoring blonde hair. So this is one of the samples that like literally scores light eyes and light hair, uh, dark blonde hair and green eyes. That's that's definitely very interesting. Uh, and for skin color, she's got white skin and actually forty seven percent likelihood of palest skin as well. So there. If if only she had like maybe one different genotype, she might have even had palest skin as the largest group for skin color. So that's very, very cool. And for her hair texture, it looks like she's got straight hair. 60% likelihood of that. So she doesn't, most likely doesn't have uh, wavy hair. Most likely doesn't have curly hair. Most definitely, definitely doesn't have kinky hair. 0.005% likelihood of that. So definitely doesn't have kinky hair. Most likely she's got straight or wavy hair. Um, probably doesn't have curly hair either. For coloring related variants found in the file, it looks like she has BH3, BH2, and BH1. She has got all the blue eye haplotypes. Uh, she also has all of the light color variants in SLC45A2 that have to do with uh, light color of eyes, hair, and skin. Um, she actually has only light one light color variant in this variation of SLC24A5, which is kind of crazy. So, despite having only one light color variant here, 
she somehow still has this this light of a pigmentation which really tells you how um how crazy her depigment how crazy her genotype is for depigmentation because like this is a pretty important genotype and she doesn't she doesn't even have homozygous derived genotype here all right so that's that's quite interesting and she does not have any light color variance in mc1r so she's not predisposed to being ginger all right um let's see the phenotype oracle let's see what phenotypes she resembles most and the phenotype oracle for her looks like this uh very cool so the phenotype oracle is based mostly on Nashakot calculator results. That's the biggest. Um, that's the biggest thing that it's based on. It is also based on like the eye, um, the eye shape predictor results, which is like a different calculator that I made previously. I improved it a little bit later. I made some improvements to it. I added a couple of pieces to it. Um, but it, it's basically a mixture of facial morphology calculator plus um, plus. Um, um, pigmentation calculator it, it is not an ethnicity calculator right so that, that's that's how it's different from you know i've seen i've seen this on inter, on the internet where it's like you you uh, put in your g25 coordinates and it gives you your your phenotype or whatever that's not what this is this is not a uh, g25 to appearance this is not a ethnic calculator because that's what it is g25 is an ethnic calculator this is an actual phenotype calculator this has to do with your actual phenotype, what you look like not what your ethnicity is so her ethnicity might be looking completely different from her, but this is what she looks like, right? So the closest phenotypes to her is this, followed by this, followed by this, and she's getting modeled actually as a mixture of 50% that plus 50% that. Uh, second closest mixture is 50% that plus 50% that. Third closest mixture is 50% that plus 50% that. And this right here is kind of like showing you the oracle for the um, for the eye uh, eye shape or like facial morphology oracle, I guess. So, like this here on the bottom would be the Oceanian. Uh, after that, I think it's South Asian. After that, I think I think it's uh, Northwest European. After that, I think it's uh, actually I'm not sure. I get lost. I'm not, I'm not sure what this one is. I, I think it might be Middle Eastern. And this, the, yeah, this one is Northeast European for sure. But I get lost in the, in these um, in these um, um, phenotypes. I should name them. After maybe in the next update, I will name. I will uh, get to naming them. All right. Let's see what she scores for the biomarkers. And for the biomarkers, she scores uh, below average level for vitamin D. She scores above average level for LDL cholesterol. She scores below average level for HDL cholesterol. Oh wow! Above average for LDL cholesterol. That's that's actually really extreme. That's a really extreme score. That's definitely very interesting. Okay, so we um, we actually might have to look at the APOB gene panel. She might have some some risk variance for that in the APOB gene panel because that does play an effect on this score. Uh, for glucose, she's got a below average score for glucose. So so there's a predisposition to uh, problems with lipid levels in this case. Uh, for hemoglobin, she's got a predisposition to high level of hemoglobin. For blood pressure, below average blood pressure, really really good to see. Uh, below average level of iron in blood, really good to see. Um, no hemochromatosis, average uh, level of sex hormone binding globulin, really good to see, average level of red blood cell count, really good to see. So uh, there's only the problem with lipid levels. And uh, for that, I think we have to look at the APOB gene panel. Let's look at the polygenic risk scores real quick. So it looks like she's got a slightly above average score for leukemia, a slightly above average score for vitiligo, a slightly below average score for myopia, uh, a average score for primary biliary cirrhosis, average score for stroke, a very high score for male pattern hair loss, which is not surprising because she's a European. A below average score for atrial fibrillation. A below average score for deep vein thrombosis. A below average score for bipolar type 1. A pretty much spot on average score for schizophrenia. A average score for type 2 diabetes. A average score for Alzheimer's. Actually, a slightly above average score for Alzheimer's. A below average score for multiple sclerosis. So the only thing that's really high here is the score for um, male pattern hair loss. For cancer section, one risk variance for breast cancer out of 10, which is um, typical, normal. 11 risk variance for testicular cancer out of 18, pretty, pretty typical as well. No risk variance for celiac disease, pretty typical. No risk variance for GSS, pretty typical. 7 risk variance for Crohn's out of 20, 24, pretty typical. No risk variance for Reifenstein's, pretty typical. 4 risk variance for Parkinson's out of, out of 16, pretty typical. But we really have to watch out for the APOB gene panel. So, so we're going to look at the APOB gene panel once, once we get to it. I'm really curious to see what she scores there. Um, I'm, I'm definitely want to see. Actually, let's 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 get to it right now. Oh wow! So she actually doesn't have any risk variance for that. So that's that's definitely very interesting. So why is she scoring so high for the uh, for the lipids levels? Hold on. Um, 
let's see for that. So she's got okay. So she's got some genotypes that increase levels of LDL cholesterol, but um, she does not have she does not have any risk variance for hypercholesteremia in, in uh, APOB. So that's that's good, I guess. I guess that's good. Okay, let's go through the monogenic traits right now. So it looks like she's got heterozygous genotype in Comsvalmet, but uh, Vodier genotype in MAOA. So it looks like she's more of a Vodier uh, overall. She's probably um, probably more of a Vodier. So um, which means higher dopamine levels and there therefore some advantages in memory and attention tasks, disadvantages in stress resiliency. It looks like she has has a predisposition to intermediate number of dopamine D2 receptor sites. Uh, quite typical. It looks like she has a predisposition to intermediate odds of autism. It looks like she has a, a predisposition to uh, short form 5 HTLPR, which means a slight slight increase in the risk of depression. Quite typical. Uh, it looks like she's got pretty much average level of empathy. Actually, no. She has a predisposition to slightly higher level of empathy uh, because this this empathy panel it takes into account all of these empathy variations, right? So she's got some she's got some genotypes that 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 code for or sociopathy, for example, she has, she has some sociopathic alleles. Like she's got the T allele here, which is the sociopathic allele. But overall, she's more of an empath, right? And because of that, the score for higher empathy is higher than the score for lower empathy. Like 17% for lower empathy, 41% for higher empathy. So she's more of an empath in terms of in terms of um, phenotype. Um, diabetes, we know she doesn't have doesn't have uh, diabetes for Alzheimer's. We know we know she doesn't really have risk score for that hemochromatosis we know she doesn't really have any risk score for that because we saw that we saw the iron panel uh multiple sclerosis really good as well no risk variance for multiple sclerosis in the hla gene we want to see the hla uh, hla gene panel actually at the bottom here so for the hla gene panel looks like she's got lower odds of autoimmune disease definitely really good to see uh this is something i added here this takes into account all the genotypes in the hla gene uh not only those that were shown on the screen but pretty much every every genotype in the hla that exists so um, this is like a very thorough examination of your genotype in HLA. For HIV and AIDS panel, it looks like she's got this genotype which leads to a reduction in HIV viral load and protection from HIV. From Canavan syndrome panel, looks like she's got zero risk variance for Canavan syndrome. Really good to see. Uh, for rare diseases and traits panel, looks like she's got this genotype. Uh, two holoprenocephalia risk variance in SSH and Sonic the Hedgehog gene. Definitely very crazy. Uh, so I don't know if it's a if it's a missed call or if it's like um I think it might be a missed call. It I think it's um yeah I don't know what to make of it because it's super rare. So yeah I, I'm I'm inclined to say it's a missed call. Okay and what else? Um, risk of heart failure due to beta blocker medications is one point one fifty three times the average. All right one uh, variant. For increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A. Uh, no micropenis, really good to see. Better performing muscles like your sprinter than, than an endurance athlete. One variant for increased pain sensitivity, likely no shovel shaped incisors and not East Asian in ancestry. No, no East Asian genotype in EDAR, so European genotype in EDAR. And for facial morphology traits, high rows of protruding nasal bridge, larger nose size, slightly thinner eyebrows. Okay, that's quite interesting. And likely nose pointing up based on DCH. S2 uh, genotype, and it looks like increased odds of uh, vitiligo based on genotype in HLA. This also goes into the calculation for the HLA panel, of course. It of course plays a part. Uh, for myopia, it looks like he's actually got the G. She's actually got the G allele here, which protects from myopia. So that's quite interesting. Uh, the G allele here is very rare, and it's also very European. Uh, what else can I talk about here? Actually, let's talk about the stuff that's on the bottom. So for muscular dystrophy myopathies, it looks like she does not have any risk variance for ADL or any of the other muscular dystrophy myopathies. For color blindness panel, she's got one risk variant in OP and one SW, but um, I, it seems that a lot of people have it, so it's not that big of a deal. For FTO gene panel, it looks like no fat gene variants in most of these vari variations, so she's not really predisposed to obesity. For syncope panel, based on two SNPs, she's got slightly below average odds for syncope. And for for bio traits panel. It looks like she's got two copies of the hunter-gatherer CLTCL1 gene variant, which uh, leads to a reduced ability to process ca carbs and sugars. Uh, this hunter-gatherer versus farmer gene variant essentially has to do with how how are you able to process carbohydrates and sugars, and they named it such because they figured it would be advantageous to farming or hunting and gathering communities to uh, 
uh, be able to process certain foods, right? Does it actually have some kind of um, does it actually have some kind of ethnic link to populations that have been hunting and gathering versus farming? I don't think so. I really don't think so because, like, I think I think I uh, think Malta boy, uh, ancient North Eurasian Malta boy, had two copies of the farmer variant. So once again, I don't really think it has any kind of ethnic link. So this hunter gatherer scoring two copies of quote unquote hunter gatherer CLT CL1 gene variant, I don't think it has any kind of. It, it's just a, it's just a coincidence, right? But it's kind of interesting that um, she's scoring two copies of this hunter gatherer gene variant. Once again. Um, so this leads to a reduced ability to process carbs and sugars. That's essentially what it does. And um, she's got this gene type, which leads to a, a significant increase in the risk of IgA neuropathy, which is a, a disease in which IgA protein builds up and damages a filtering part of the kidney. And it looks like she is less able to detect uh, beta ionine uh, fragrance. It looks like she's got this gene type, which is, which is to intermediate red blood cell count. And it looks like she's got this gene type, which is to decrease protection of neurons against glutamate toxicity and decreased rate of glutamate degradation. Right, so uh, for blood, for blood group, this is the last thing we're going to look at. It looks like her blood type is most likely type A, but type AB is actually quite possible as well. So 72% likelihood of type A and 20.7% likelihood of type AB. Type B is sort of possible too. It's 6% likelihood, but it's most likely type A. Um, most likely type A, but it's also possibly type AB. That's definitely very interesting. Kind of rare, really uncommon. So, yeah, it's kind of uncommon. What do you think about it? Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Um, of course, you can download this file in 23andMe format from link, which is in the, descript in the description of the video. Uh, thanks for watching my video until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, share. Goodbye.